five or more questions with Tommy Black. We got Jim Rota from Fireball Ministry. How you doing, man? I'm good. Playing the Viper Room again. I remember you played the Viper Room a few okay. times over the years, haven't you? Yeah, you know, we I, we uh, we jokingly call it, you know, we call it the house because you know it's kind of like our home base for when we want to play in town because you know it's it's fun and honestly. It sounds great, so you actually know how you sound when yeah. you're playing up there. Yeah. So we love it. We honestly, I mean, that's not that's no lie. We love the joint. That's awesome. We get that a lot. Uh, that's awesome. That the room sounds so good. It's like best. Yeah. Room. Weird. It's old twenties Bugsy Siegel wood, and and yeah. it's it's best room on the West Coast. And it's basically it's basically shaped like a trivial pursuit wedge, <laughs> and for like for some reason that's like a fantastic shape for loud rocking. That's funny. Um, well, how how long have you guys been around? Well, you know that's like asking a girl her age. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. We're we're we are a twenty year old band this year. Wow. And yeah, originally Ohio. Well, Emily and I met in Ohio. And then we moved to New York City. We met in Cincinnati. Then we moved to New York City. And we kind of, like, had this idea to start a band. But in New York at the time, it was really inconvenient to be in a band because, you know, you you have to have gear in one place and, you know, get your gear. Like, you were always, every time you did one show, it felt like you were going on tour because you had to, you know, rent the van and move your stuff from storage. And, you know. yeah. So, anyway, long story short... You know, this whole thing had been happening out in, in California, you know, this whole kind of scene of, of bands that were clearly, you know, Sabbath, uh, let's say, influenced. And, you know, it seemed like at the time it was either moved to England or moved to L.A. So we chose L.A. Um, and, came, and honestly, we, we, we were in... September 98 by November of 98 we had our first deal with the record. Wow. Yeah. Like, you know, it was like the opposite of what happens to every other band ever. That's really cool. We we went to House Phone. Uh, we had some cutouts there. So who um, who are you currently playing with? All right. So it's myself, Emily Burton, the other founding member of the yeah, band. Right. Uh, John Oreshnik, who's the the drummer of this band, who's been there since 98 as well. And uh, Scott Reeder is playing bass. However, not not playing with us Friday or heading to the U.K. because of some super gnarly hand and foot surgery. Ah, horrible. Yeah, all, and both at the same time because he's a maniac. Wow. But, yeah. Now, how I think you haven't really changed members much except for bass players, I think, over the years. You're like... Yeah, only bass players. Is and the irony is, well... Spinal Tap bass yeah, players. Yeah, exactly. That's our Spinal Tap member. <laughs> but, you know, what's cool is, is that Helen was actually our first bass player ever. Wow. So, Helen, who's playing with us, Helen Storer right now, mm -hmm. and playing with us on Friday and doing this UK tour, she's the first bass player that we had. That's so, everybody's, you know, uh, for the most part, everybody's still friendly, even, you know, if they were in the band or not in the band. It's... Yeah. It's not that kind of situation. It was just like a, I got this other thing going on now, and it always just happened to be the bass player. Johnny Chow, who played with you, worked at the club also. Yeah, now he's playing with Stone Sour, which is killer. Awesome. We love Johnny. Yeah, two of the members. Yeah. Two of the members of Stone Sour, Christian and Johnny, both. Oh yeah. Christian was security, and Johnny and I tortured each other behind the bar. Yeah, I remember that. That's amazing. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Uh, they, yeah. They should play there. Um, but anyway. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So um, your first record was on Cleopatra. We love Cleopatra. Was no, it? no, no, no. First, oh. first record was Bong Load. Bong Load. Oops. Okay. The new one is Cleopatra. Now, I saw, no, your first was that, that cassette demo you have on your site. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, Emily, Emily went all the way. Yeah, we had like a three-song demo, and that demo was the thing that got us, got us our deal. And then we did a split seven-inch with that band Fato Jetson. Wow. On like a tiny label out of Cincinnati, Ohio, and then we 
did our first record for Bong Lud. Well, I guess labels are like our other Spinal Tap member because we did our first record for Bong Lud. We did our second record. Well, we did an EP in between there for Small Stone Records, which mm-hmm. is an awesome label out of Detroit. Then we did our, thir- our <clears throat> second full-length record for Nuclear Blast. Our third one for a label called Liquor and Poker, which was a division of uh, Century Media. <laughs> and then the l- latest one is uh, on Cleopatra. Then we love those guys. Yeah, cool. Dang. <laughs> and you you produced, um, you're playing with, with King, too, and you produced King, right? Yeah, I did the record The record before last. It's called Burn the Serum. I did that record with a guy named Andrew Luckle, and wow. I love those guys, and I, I, I think they're totally amazing, and I think they're really, really talented, And but I just, you know, the world doesn't seem to want to embrace rock right now. Right. It just feels like, it just feels like a... It's just not the moment. I mean, I'm not saying the moment doesn't happen again, you know, very soon, but it's, we're in one of those cycles. Yeah. And Thanks, back all, but, I mean, people people love you guys. I mean, yeah. And, and, oh, yeah, we're yeah. lucky. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I mean, like, dude, I, 20 fucking years, I, I don't, no one, no, no member of this band thought that anybody would still want to come see us in 20 years. You know what I mean? I wake, I... I get on stage every every show at this point, and I'm so thankful. And I know we all are. It's just like, thank you for, I mean, you know, it's not like we're selling out the stadiums or anything, but, you know, we still get to do these awesome opportunities, and every and we're lucky enough to actually still like each other, so. Yeah. You know, I you mean, know, uh, Nikki, awesome. Nikki Six put the show on his Instagram, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. that's, that's cool. And you, you've toured with, like, I mean, what? Like Danzig and who else? Anthrax, yeah, Motorhead, we, Flair. Yeah, we toured with Dio. We did the Motorhead tour. We did a Danzig. We've done sh- a bunch of shows with Danzig. We've gotten uh, we we toured with Bloister Cult and, and Uriah Heep, and Jeez. you know we've been really again like really lucky to have always met like these amazing people that we loved growing up, and then sure enough they turn out to be amazing people. You know, because they always say don't meet your idols, and but we've never met any of them that were. Not awesome. Yeah, you know, we opened for Judas Priest, and we opened for. Oh, I just thought of another one. Now I can't remember. But like, every single one of them were always great. I mean, you know, like I, you know, like just spending like three months with D, you know Dio, I could tell you like a hundred stories of how you know insanely awesome he was. Cool. Oh, Alice Cooper was the other one I I thought of. Can I have one one awesome Dio story? Yeah, well, you know, he, he, um, he was like really serious about like the band sounding great. And the, this one night I was, uh, got, we were playing in, in, um, Albuquerque at the Sunshine Theater. I can't remember the name of the place, but anyway, <clears throat> the dressing room was downstairs and Dio would always just let us use their dressing room. It was so, just such a cool move, you yeah, know? That's very cool. Yeah, and he would always just be like, they always give us too much food and, and, and drinks anyway. Just whatever you guys want. It doesn't matter. And if wow. we run out, we'll get more. That wow. kind of shit. Yeah, no snobbery. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah just a, you know, like a real, like a bro. And long story short, this one particular night, I was sneaking down to go get a beer, and I hear him kind of like just going off on the band. And he's just like, you know, name by name, pointing at each guy like you weren't worth it. You know, you guys, you, know, you were doing this and you were doing that and you were doing this and whatever. And and uh, he looks. Rudy Sarzo was the bass player in the band at the mm-hmm. time, and he looks over at Rudy. He goes, "The only one, the only one he is worth a shit is Rudy. He never fucks up." <laughs> so anyway, um, so then I kind of sneak around the back and I go to like our little sectioned off area that we had that night and. And uh, all the guys leave except for Ronnie, and he's sitting on the couch. And he he, he like says he's like, "Hey Jimmy, come over here." He kept calling. He called me Jimmy that whole tour. He goes, "Jimmy, come over here." And I was like, "All right." And I I sit down next to him on the couch, and I hand him a Boddington's because that's what he would drink. Mm. And he looks at me and he goes, "Jimmy." All I ever fucking wanted to do was play baseball. (laughs) 
<laughs> what do you say to that? You know, you're just like, oh, I'm sorry, Ronnie Dio. Yeah, I'm sorry you were in Black Sabbath. I'm sorry you're all flustered <laughs> right now. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you know, you were in Rainbow. I don't know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sounds like you should have just played baseball. <laughs> But yeah, wow. that was that was one of them. The other, one of the other awesome ones was I remember he, he we were I I watched him like things you know this crazy set and then he was doing Stargazer by Rainbow and he was doing he would do Neon Nights sometimes and 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 always like always perfect always hitting every single yeah. note and one night I was just like I saw him backstage after I was you know marveling and and I was just like hey man. How? What do you do for warm-ups? Like, what do you like? What's the process? Like, because you don't ever hit a bad note. And he he touched my face and he goes, Jimmy, you either got it or you don't. Wow, it's true. That was it. It's true. Yeah, dude, he was awesome. He was the coolest. Him and Lemmy were the coolest, man. Yeah, that's cool. And you, I mean, I you hear the Lemmy and you hear the Sabbath and your guys' stuff always. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I which mean, is you know, so cool. Yeah. Um, we just we always like to say that we're a blender of all of our favorite bands. Okay. Like that's what we're basically like a tribute band to every single band you know we ever loved. That's cool. You pick the cool elements and put them together and make it your own. That's freaking cool. Yeah, we try. Yeah, and uh-huh. you worked with Dave Grohl too. Yeah, but I we my partner John Ramsey and I produce um, his projects that involve cameras. So. We did the uh, Sound City documentary back in, I think it was 2011 or 12, and wow. then we did the Sonic Highways TV series for HBO back in 2013. Four, yeah, 14 maybe? That's cool. I can't remember. Yeah, and it's fun because I like to do those kind of, you know, inspire kids to pick up a musical instrument projects. You know, that that's what's fulfilling about that stuff. Wow. So you guys are going to the the UK here? You doing a tour? Yeah, we go. We leave the 24th. I believe the first show might be the 26th, and then we're there. We play London, or yeah, I think London on the 4th of November, and that's it. This is like an 11 show, mm-hmm. uh, eight or 11 show little run with uh, Coc and a band called Orange Goblin and a band called Black Moth. Huh. So, yeah, I bet they love you over there. They probably yeah, it's. We haven't been to the UK in a bit. We 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 mostly go to Germany, but but the UK, man, like the last time we were there it was awesome. And, but uh, you know, it's it's just like I said before, it's just nice to you know have people still want to come and see us play. So yeah. it'll be a good ticket. Like I know that if like an, another band besides us was on that bill, I would be stoked to go see it. So yeah, no, they're good. they're cool fan. They're cool. They're big music fans out there. You know? Best. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, we're looking forward to having you on Friday. <laughs> but yeah, you, King, and um, um, if you want a bullfight, that's, a, that's going to be a cool bill. All right. Well, I'll see you then on Friday. And, and nice talking to you. <laughs> you too. Thanks, Tommy. See you, Jim. Bye. Bye-bye.